Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 26, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In diaries today, we got one by Xavier analyzing another PowerShell script, this time one that implements some fileless features in PowerShell. Fileless malware, as the name implies, distinguishes itself by leaving no files on the system and with that, of course, minimizing detection. Some fileless malware stays entirely in memory, but then, of course, you have the problem. What happens if the system is rebooted? The malware that Xavier found uses another common trick. It writes itself to the registry. So technically not a distinct file, even though, of course, if you're a purist, the malware does end up on the disk. First, the script hides its windows from the user. Then it exfiltrates information, just identifying the victim's computer. That, of course, could be used to target particular users. The strings are encrypted via AES, uh, so that way network detection plays less of a role here. And finally, the URL to retrieve the script is then written to a registry key in order to obtain persistence. Now, at this point, things become a little bit less fileless here because there is then a simple link file that allows the execution of the code from the registry key. PowerShell scripts like this are sort of one of those tricky issues because uh, they are very lightweight, uh, they're very flexible. So the same PowerShell script may be used for some commodity and more or less harmless uh, exploit, as well as to install some more targeted malware. This is why you shouldn't really uh, take them too lightly if you find them on a system. But well, who cares about desktops and laptops, Windows uh, these days? It's all about mobile devices, Android and iOS. And of course, we need to secure them as well. And for this, we often use mobile device management software. MDM company FileWave today released an update fixing two critical vulnerabilities in its software. The vulnerabilities were discovered by Clarity's Team 82 and Clarity released a blog post with additional details. Now, sadly, even though one may naively expect critical systems like MDM software to hold themselves to higher standards, the vulnerabilities are all too common, we got a hard-coded cryptographic key, that's CVE 2022-34906, and then we do have an authentication bypass, as Clarity points out. It's similar, actually, to a vulnerability that was recently patched in F5 Big IP, and I guess uh, Clarity mentions this in uh, their uh, blog post, should make maybe FileWave feel a little bit better that other big players uh, have uh, the very similar vulnerabilities. But if you remember the F5 issue, the problem here was that you had a front-end web server, it received the request, and then it sort of added a special header telling the next web server that it uh, forwarded the request to that uh, the request was properly authenticated, but an attacker could actually add that header and uh, with that uh, bypass authentication. Similar here, so... The request is received by that front end web server. It authenticates username and password, and then it forwards the request with a fixed authorization header. Fixed here meaning that uh, the string after the authorization header is always the same. So that's your hard coded credential here. However, and that's something, according to Clarity, that was sort of added in a later version of the product. An attacker wouldn't just be able to send that particular header because the receiving web server makes sure that the host header is localhost. And these web servers, they're talking to each other on the same system, so they're using localhost to connect to each other. But what they didn't consider was that unlike the client IP that's often used for that, the host header is user provided. So by using the host header, an attacker now in addition to adding that authorization header just has to set the host header to localhost and well, they're ready to go. 
Now, typically I would tell you, hey, you know, uh, systems like this shouldn't be exposed to the world. That's not quite true here for these uh, mobile device management systems because new users that you provision with the system need to connect to it. So you may be able to limit it to like a corporate network or something like this, but uh, yes, users have to be able to connect and that of course increases your exposure. So please apply the patch that was released by FileWave. Okay, very simple attack here. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about UEFI or bias of vulnerabilities. Often talked about, but not a ton of examples of them being exploited. Well, Kaspersky now just published a write-up of a case that they investigated that did involve a firmware backdoor or rootkit. They call it Cosmic Strand and attribute it to a Chinese-speaking threat actor. An earlier variant of this rootkit was actually discussed by Chihu360 back in 2017. So not completely new here. And back then it was assumed that the firmware rootkit was installed pre-purchase by a reseller. So in some ways an evil mate type of attack. And that's something that they're sort of suspecting possibly here as well. It only seems to affect very specific motherboards with specific uh, chipsets. So uh, possible that uh, these particular systems do have a vulnerability that allows for this evil mate attack. Once installed, uh, well, it uh, will then on boot install a backdoor into the Windows kernel and establish a connection to a command and control server. Lots more details from Kaspersky, including some indicators of compromise. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.